So if you haven't already noticed, we have quite a few instruments in the live room here. This right here is our Boston Baby Grand Piano on loan by, from my friend Normandy. Um, and it is designed by Steinway actually. So it's not a Steinway, but it inherits some of the technical aspects and some of the craftsmanship of a Steinway. And because of that, it sounds amazing and records just super, super nice. All right, over here we've got our Hammond organ. This is a B2. It's got the Leslie speaker with it. And what's cool about this one is someone added a uh, percussion upgrade. So this actually makes it more like a B3. And what you get here is, you know, the classic Hammond sound with the Leslie speaker, which is very difficult to emulate with anything else. So on top of the Hammond organ, we got a few fun toys here. Um, this is a Casio SK-1 sampling keyboard, classic. This is a Yamaha PSS-130, kind of a fun 8-bit sound to this guy. We've got a Micromoog synth right here. This is an amazing synthesizer. And what's fun is that we've got these little presets that go on top. That's how they used to do presets. So we got a bunch of those, so that's cool. Um, it's also some fun toys like this little Korg Monotron and some different analog drum machines like this Con and K Rhythmer and this Rhythm Ace. Um, so, some cool little toys. Now on top of the Leslie here, we've got a whole pedal board. This is a nice pedal board from a local company called Salvage Custom. And uh, we got an assortment here of different guitar pedals. The Ibanez Tube Screamer, the JHS Cran. Here's an old Big Muff Pie with the old green case there. A couple of Moog uh, effects, the MF Flange and the MF Trem. A little Electro -harmon Harmonic Small Stone, as well as the Analogizer and the Small Clone. This is a really great pedal, the Warp Vinyl from Chase Bliss Audio. Super cool sounds out of that. A Voodoo Labs Microvibe, a Memory Boy, and a little ABY switch. So over here we've got a Rhodes Mark I electric piano. Classic sound of the Rhodes. It's got those bell-like tones, but also if you dig into it, it really gets kind of crunchy and mean. So I love that. Um, on top of the Rhodes, we've got some other fun toys. Uh, some more pedals like this octave multiplexer and a wah pedal. Some of these uh, Korg Volca series sequencers and so forth. I uh, got a vocoder here. Um, this is a funny little thing called the Remco sound effects that makes weird gunshot sounds and laser gun sounds. Um, this is a cool little guy interface that lets you um, hook up your guitar to the Leslie speaker. So that can be fun or anything really with a quarter inch connection. And then uh, this is a really kind of rare sense now. It's called the SID station. Uh, it's made by Electron. And inside it actually has the sound chip from a Commodore 64. So it makes these crazy, you know, old computer sounds. <laughs> so over here we've got a Wurlitzer electric piano. It's uh, similar to the Rhodes, but it's got its own thing going. Um, you know, I like having these actual electric pianos in the studio because they have their own little quirks to them. And yeah, you could have a Nord Lead 3 or something in Logic that you pull up with these sounds, but it's never going to be something unique like this. Now, over here, we've got a Farfisa mini compact organ. These are Italian organs uh, made probably in the 60s, and they've got these really dark, haunting, reedy sounds to them. Really cool. So over here we actually have a Deegan vibraphone made in Chicago. Not every studio has a vibraphone, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of a cool thing to have. It might not be for every project, but if you're looking for one, here it is. Uh, we got a whole box of mallets for it, as well as other stuff down here, like a whole set of percussion, an auto harp, a Honer Melodica, and a Glockenspiel. One more instrument for you. We actually do have a theremin here at the studio. One of the earliest electronic musical instruments ever invented. 
uh, very, very difficult to play, but if you'd like to give it a shot, we got one. All right, so now we're gonna go over a bunch of different amplifiers we got at the studio, starting with this Silverface Fender Twin. Needs little introduction. Great amp, what can I say? Um, on top of it here, we got this fun little Greta tube amp. Pretty much nothing but dirt out of this guy, but it can be fun for effect. Similar thing here, not tube, but this fun little orange Crush 3. Um, this right here, this Ampeg Gemini 1, I love this amp, it's probably my favorite amp in the studio. Just has a really unique character and vibe to it, and I love the reverb sound and the tremolo on it. Over here, we got a solid state Harvard reverb. So if you need a different tone, you can really get something, something different with this one. Um, over here, we've got a Fender Bandmaster, the Blackface. My favorite clean tone amp I've ever heard is this one. Um, it's got the 212 cabinet for it. And this is a Schreier Audio Reverb Unit, uh, locally made. This is another reverb unit here. Uh, it's a PV valve verb. It's tube. Uh, it's uh, got a tremolo in it as well. Pretty cool. And this is a trainer open back combo amp. Pretty underrated uh, amp here. And finally, we've got a bass amp, classic, the Ampeg B15. Big transformers, tubes. Maybe not for loud rock, but for pretty much anything else, this is a great sounding bass amp. Okay, so one other cool thing I just wanted to show you guys before we uh, leave the live room here are these two tape echoes I got. Um, got the classic space echo, just the standard RE101 here. Um, you know, it's old, it's a little funky, but um, if you're after that sound, there's nothing like it. Over here, though, is a much more modern tape echo. This only recently came out. It's the T-Rex Replicator. Um, so this is a much more stable device, let's say. Um, and it's cool because it's got tap tempo, and it's also got this chorus effect that you can add. Um, so, you know, a couple true tape analog delays at your disposal here. All right, over here we've got uh, quite a few different electric guitars and basses that you can use while you're here. Um, this here is an Epiphone Les Paul, classic studio guitar, tons of sustain. You probably know it. Um, right here we got a Fender Telecaster on loan from Mr. Scott Lehman, who's operating the camera right now. Uh, recently set up by Sean Hutchinson of Hutchinson's Plays Like a Dream. Over here, this was my first guitar, complete with Apple stickers. These are original Apple IIe stickers, by the way. Um, this is a Fender Strat, Mexican. Also recently set up by Sean Hutchinson. This here, uh, something a little different, on loan from my buddy Eddie. It's a Dan Electro Hornet reissue. Super vibey vintage guitar. Well, I guess it's reissued, not vintage, but it's got that vintage tone. And as far as basses go, we've got this Fender P bass. This is a vintage 70s neck on a more modern body, but this thing plays great, records great. People love it. And finally, We've got this Hofner copy made by Jay Terser. It's got that Beatles, Beatles bass sound. Um, so just another cool option. All right, I'm over here on the other side of the control room now where we've got a complement of uh, interesting uh, acoustic guitars and a banjo. This here uh, was my grandmother's. Uh, this is a K. Uh, really unique old sound to that guitar there. Um, this one found at a thrift store 
it's nearly falling apart, but <laughs> it actually sounds pretty neat. Um, if you're looking for something different, this one really give you some. Um, this is probably the most normal sounding of the acoustics in the studio. It's an Alvarez. Um, so if you're looking for something just more standard, I'd pick up this one. Um, and we've got this classical guitar that belonged to my father. Um, so nylon strings. Um, you know, if you need that, we got that. And also my father's. This was his long neck banjo. So if you need a banjo, we got that too. <laughs> 